how Americans got so stupid. I think that whenever I realized that people had lost their fucking minds, it was whenever that crazy lady in the airplane wouldn't sit next to somebody because she thought they were a lizard. No! And that didn't make me think that people had lost their minds. All of the comments saying, hold up, she's cooking, let her cook. That's what made me realize that people had lost their mind. That was really too much. You want to know how I got this dislike ratio? Ooh. I make a video. That sounds, looks like every one of my fucking videos. All right. Using the Soviet Union and nobody bats an eye. Yep. I make a video praising the United States and... Everybody loses their minds. Okay, fine. I hear you. You only want to well, hear. I think that people want to hear bad things about the U.S. You think about like, okay, so if you live in Japan, you know there is like an altercation that we had with them, that was not good for Japan. There are people in uh, anywhere in the Middle East. They are probably not the biggest fans of America. South American certain countries not big fans. Guess what? Whenever you fuck with people, they're not going to like it. Things that confirm what you already believe. I get it. Yeah. Let's talk about why Americans are stupid. Okay, here we go. There's a famous episode of the Jimberly Kimberly live show this where the funniest, funniest residents of Los Angeles fail to name a single country. Is this South Africa? Yeah, the country of Asia. Greenland or Iceland or something. <laughs> I always assume this stuff is like fake because like have you ever been like so stressed out that like somebody asks you something like this you get put on the spot and you just blank but I don't really hold this against people that much although these are no doubt cherry picked and I'm sure if you stood in a big city all day and shoved a camera in people's faces yeah, and you'll asked eventually them questions, get some losers. you'd be able to find three minutes worth of people who couldn't answer on the spot exactly yeah for a dollar name a woman yeah name a woman. that's what I was yeah. thinking of um... this one. But the stereotype that Americans are ignorant about the wider world is largely true. Oh, it is. Why would, like, we already live in the, well, at least I live in the greatest country in the world, Texas, of course. So we know about the United States, but who gives a fuck about anything besides that? These people can't name a country because they don't care about other countries. Yeah. 40% of Americans <laughs> yeah. have a passport compared to 66% of Canadians and 76% of Brits. Right. In 1994, it was only 10% of Americans. Oh, wow. But that doesn't mean Americans have gotten more globetrotting since the skinniest then. American It was because family. after an above-average episode of the news, it became yeah. mandatory to need a passport when entering Canada and mm -hmm. Mexico. So it's fair to say that a very small percent of Americans will be leaving this corner of the world. Right. As I said in a previous video, America has all you'd ever want geographically within yep. her borders. Why go anywhere else? Exactly. I completely agree. I I complete absolutely 100%. The foreign cultures maybe? And I will even go farther. I don't even know where the other states are. Because who gives a fuck where Nebraska is? Place sounds like a shithole. Why do I want to know? <laughs> That's what I think. Americans don't care about that either. On the list of the highest grossing movies in the USA, you yeah. have to go all the way to 520th place to get a movie that isn't American. Crouching it's Tiger, Crouching Tiger oh. Hidden Dragon, by the way. I couldn't even beat the Nutty Professor. Somebody please check up. Oh, about... come on. This is of every blockbuster, man. Oh, people love this one. Angley, I think he might have killed himself. Neither do global affairs hold the average American's interest. No. When asked about the Kyoto Climate Accords, who the Taliban are, or who Nicolas Sarkozy is, mm -hmm. Americans are woefully underinformed compared to other developed no, nations. No, why would they give a fuck? In 2009, only half knew that last year's Olympics were To be were fair, held we do know who the Taliban are. Those are the people that are wrong. We hear about the Taliban whenever elections come up. Or if there's a vote to spend more money on the military, then we learn about the Taliban. Beijing. Oh, but of course, when asked mm -hmm. to name American celebrities, they had no trouble at all. Well, yeah, I mean... At the same time, we non-Americans are flooded with American culture. Right. Some British people know more about American politics and history than their own. Once you're because we're just that important. That's why. Obviously. The French depth or the Z axis is. It's Z axis, you floppy haired moron. France had to pass <laughs> laws banning radio stations from playing too much American music. Really? What the fuck? There are only two countries in the world where Coca Cola is not sold 
Wait, scratch that. This journalist from Finland bought a Coke at a water park in Pyongyang in 2017. Oh, wow. And what's this hiding in the background of somebody's holiday snaps at the National Hotel de Cuba? Oh. Look, you know something's up when remote tribesmen in the Amazon rainforest who don't even have electricity know who Michael Jackson is. I mean, to be fair, he was the king of pop. Michael Jackson was a fucking legend. Like, of course everybody knows who Michael fucking Jackson is. Americans used to be quite well read. After the Second World War, Americans consumed 63% of all the newspapers in the world, and they used wow. this to their advantage. In 1948, the newly formed United Nations created Ooh. a list of human rights that all countries should strive to uphold. Should. One area that Americans were particularly interested in was this one, Article 19. Okay. Everyone has the right to freedom of expression and opinion and receive and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. So, like, that doesn't happen in a lot of places, though, so that's kind of interesting. What the USA wanted was a completely level playing field. Anyone mm -hmm. can buy any media from any other country. Uh -huh. A global free market of ideas yeah. released from the shackles of censorship. For if anyone can gain access to the truth... We cannot be marched into the same kind of ignorance and intolerance that characterized the Axis nations of the war. This is- Oh! I think that's generally like, the, you're definitely, I mean like, everybody's seen, I'm sure you've seen studies, things like this about how you know, intelligence and bigotry, or not intelligence, education and bigotry are like inversely correlated. The more intelligent, the more educated you are, the less bigoted you are in a general sense. So yeah, sure. Admirable. Where did they go wrong? Freedom of speech is a core um, value of the United States and many other allied nations. I'll see, we'll see what he says. But some delegates, like those from India, questioned the US's motives. If you believe in an equal access to information and culture, shouldn't you redistribute some of your media creating capacity to developing nations like ours so that we have an equal opportunity to tell the world our stories that sounds stupid, the americans okay. would not budge yeah of course, of course they knew deep the down fuck, like, bro like what the fuck we have to what, we're gonna go print papers for india why the fuck would we do that we gotta print our own papers what the fuck, figure it out he was right the American delegation to the convention was highly populated by journalists and media yeah. magnates. They knew that if countries couldn't afford their own news, they would be increasingly reliant on buying mm. news from American wire companies like the Associated Press, yeah. which was good for both the media company's profits, but also the US State Department, who would no doubt have been licking their lips at the prospect of a billion mm. people reading news with a specific American spin on it. In 1944, the Associated Press sold news to 38 countries. Oh, wow. Within eight years, that had doubled to 70 countries. Holy shit. In the 1950s, around half of films shown in European and Asian cinemas were American, two-thirds in Mexico, Brazil, and Argentina. Which makes sense. Americans made grand Technicolor films brimming with Hollywood sparkle because they could afford to. Whereas war-torn Europe impoverished well, yeah, because they're fucking they just got bombed like you gotta remember like europe like they got bombed like fucking they blew each other up for like what was it fucking world war one for like five years and then they said hold up that's not enough let's do it again so yeah their shit was fucked up of course they can't do that mexico and nuclear obliterated japan were stuck making small scale comedies to keep up morale one of the most popular French movies in 40s France was 1949's The Big Day, a mostly plotless movie where a whimsical French postman gets into wacky mischief in a quaint village. Man. Best European movie, huh? Is this it? This what you guys do over there? Man. Man. Classic, huh? Those are the days, yeah. There just wasn't the money or resources for anything else. Yeah. Hollywood captured the European public's mm -hmm. imagination, and they wanted more. But why is it only a one-way street? Mm -hmm. Because while you can do or say whatever you want within the United States, 
The Constitution also says that the American government can regulate what goes in or out. During the Cold War, anything that might be considered communist propaganda could be seized by the post office and oh never God. delivered. Uh, but, I cannot believe they let that shit happen. That's so stupid. Like, how did that never, like, how's that not against the First Amendment? That's the dumbest fucking shit. Or even souvenirs from was. communist countries. By the way, y'all might not know this, but a lot of those, like, fucking Civil War statues and shit like that, they didn't build that after the Civil War. They built those, they built those in the 50s. Like, this isn't some kind of, like, fucking historical monument from, like, the 1800s. Nah, they built this shit, like, as a result of, like, McCarthyism, like, r r like fucking a resurgence of different types of uh, racism. Not even resurgence, there's more of it there. But, like, resurgence of, like, communism, etc. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's... Uh, w which ones? I mean, I don't have a list, bro. But, like, my dad said the Pledge of Allegiance before they had Under God in it. That's how new it is. I think it was in 1952, 1955, something like that. Yeah, a lot of these things are way newer than you might think. pamphlets criticizing U.S. foreign yeah. policy. Immigration reached a low point in the early 70s, with only 4.7% mm. of Americans being foreign-born, limiting Americans' interaction with different cultures. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it wasn't totally like North Korea. Plenty of foreign movies and music were allowed into the U.S., yep. but the media that caught on was either already Americanized or so yep. plastically exotic that it doesn't really say anything about the culture where it's from. The Beatles were British, yes, but they got their start covering American rock and roll musicians. When John Lennon stepped out of line, the American government made sure that he knew it. Oh Movies yeah, imp yeah, like I forgot all about that. But didn't that girl, that Yoko Ono girl apparently ruin his life? Like, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm gonna be real guys. I am not a huge Beatle f Beatles fan. I'm not. I don't think they're that great. I think they're okay, but like, it's just not my thing. And again, I'm not, I'm not saying it's like they're, I'm not saying they're bad, right? It's just not my thing. Ported from Japan were mostly samurai flicks and very yeah, few movies set in the modern day. The film Ikiru is widely considered the best Japanese film ever made, if you ignore people who have never felt the touch of a woman. But this existential drama about a depressed, lonely man was only given a limited release in California, yeah. and the poster was edited to feature a stripper who is only in the movie for like one minute. The narr Well, that's because they wanted people to go to the movie. Because if they just get to see, oh wow, it's about some house of Japanese guys having a bad time, I bet Americans back then didn't give a fuck about that. But if there's a stripper there, it's like, okay, well, let's see what this is. The narrow stream of European movies that made it into the USA came in the form of the French New Wave Cinema, uh -huh. movies that were stylistically inspired by American films, but also so stuffy that few audiences would ever want to watch them anyway. This was further stifled by the Hayes Code, a set of extremely strict regulations that were in place from 1934 mm -hmm. to 1968. If you've ever wondered Which, why- Which, by the way, Kevin Smith could have pulled off a shot like that in Clark's one, and nobody would have lost interest. Old black and white films seem so, so dry, it's because of these rules. It's not even a question. Some things that were completely banned from ever being shown in any film included. <laughs> bad guys winning. All movies had to end with the police outwitting the evil criminals or the criminals causing their own demise. Yep. Any nudity, even the silhouette of a booba, is an instant ban. Blood or dead bodies. When people get shot mm -hmm. in old films, they usually just clutch the wound, but no actual blood is seen. Yeah. Pointing a gun at somebody in the same frame. This is why guns are always held at waist height. Kissing for longer than three seconds. Interracial <laughs> couples, white people as slaves, criticism <laughs> of religion or of any other country. Naturally, this prevented the more artistically liberal European films from being shown in oh, American God. cinemas. And when they did get a US release, they were usually edited to remove the violence in movies and sex on TV to comply with the good old-fashioned values. Uh -huh. 
at least until the rules were abolished in 1968 and replaced by the age rating system we have today. Yeah. Even as the Cold War ended and the internet gave Americans oh. unparalleled access to the rest of the world and all of human knowledge, they still preferred to hang out on a handful of American-made websites dominated by Americans. Well, I think a lot of people, like, I don't know, though, because, like, there's apparently other social media platforms on other countries. But, like, for example, in China, they do things a lot different over there for obvious reasons. Russia, same thing. But I feel like a lot of these platforms, like, they have a lot of, like, international audience. Uh, I, I don't know the extent of that, though, because I don't live in those other countries. The insular culture of 20th century America has carried over to the 21st. Mm -hmm. Tightened border security after septiembre undecimo means foreign musicians can have a hard time getting visas. In 2002, the touring visa of a German orchestra was cancelled after it was discovered the cellist had a criminal record for shoplifting a pair of tweezers in 1991. When they tried Smart. again for a visa yeah. in 2004, the cellist had to undergo an hour-long interview with Homeland Security yeah. and had to physically pick up his visa from the US. Because you see, like, this was a weapons of mass destruction time. See, everybody nowadays, there's a, uh, a very strong, like, uh, I guess you could say, like, more of a liberal slant to media. People might not remember that people would lose their jobs in the mid-2000s, and the early 2000s, for questioning the Iraq war. It was not good back then embassy. Global yeah. cultures might be more present in American media, but they're always through the lens of American characters, of such as The Last Samurai starring Tom Cruise, yeah. where he Great plays movie. a white guy in 1870s. Great movie. I remember whenever this movie came out, my friend Lowell bought a samurai sword off of the Bud K catalog uh, for like 20 bucks, and we went outside, and we cut cardboard with it, and the sword bent, and he said he was going to be a samurai. Japan. Seven we were years in his in driveway. Tibet, another American in China. Indiana Jones. Wait, which American, one was this? Seven years in Tibet. Oh, another... I watched this with my mom. This was such an incredible movie. American in China. Yeah. Indiana Jones. American in Oh, there Egypt. it is. Yeah, that's the <laughs> fucking American interaction with the rest of the world. Got him. The Born Identity. Yeah. American in France. Inglorious Bastards. Americans in German occupied France. And for the ladies in the audience, mm -hmm. Mamma Mia. For a movie set on Which, a Greek island. By the island, way, uh, I'm pretty sure Christoph Waltz actually was. Uh, uh, didn't Quentin Tarantino find him from like just German cinema? And like now he's a fucking massive A list celebrity. Everybody knows him. Yeah, was he. Uh, he's Austrian? I thought it was German cinema. I'm not sure exactly. But yeah, that. <laughs> Like, I mean, this is, by the way, this is the best movie to watch whenever you're not paying attention to it. Like, I'd probably watch this movie a hundred times. And for the ladies in the audience, Mamma Mia. For a movie set on a Greek island, there's not a single Greek person in the entire movie. Is there any hope for America? Or are they destined yeah. to be a stinky, dumb, red... <laughs> <gasps> what a fucking... <laughs> What a fucking frame, man. Oh my god. Net country forever. Maybe. Yeah. In 2000, 92% of the music in the USA Top 50 was American, making it the second most insulated market in the world after Pakistan. But Really? Cause, so I was thinking about this and like, you know, going through this video, like I always think about like exceptions and like ways that things are wrong. My understanding is that, like, Japanese culture is also extremely insular and, like, very, like, culturally, um, like, uh, homogenous. So it's like, does Japan have these same problems? Because I don't, I don't think this is really the reason. I think this is a really good angle, but I, do, I think this is, like, a piece of the pie, and it's not a very big piece of the pie, personally. Today, it's more like 60%. I, I don't think so. With Brits, Canadians, Latin Americans, and Africans making themselves more seen in the charts. Mm -hmm. Each year, there are more foreign films nominated at the Academy Awards than ever before. What used to be an American... Well, it's also like, I mean, look at how popular anime is and manga is now. Like, it's getting massively popular. I mean, I, I'm astonished to see it happen. 
like yeah you still have people that like want to see live action stuff and everything like that but like the amount of people that are interested in consuming anime nowadays is really impressive and it's it's, it's becoming mainstream yeah like i'll see like some random like a uh, meme about like a, a like i remember some guy had a, a haircut like polnareff and uh jojo and like the tweet had like a hundred thousand likes and it's like what the fuck right like this is as many as like any other tweet would get so it's just incredible to see like how much of that has grown only pay to win award show is now an international pay to win award oh, show good. as social media platforms have an element of randomness in what they show users there is a higher chance of americans being shown videos from other countries forcing them to take note of what is happening I think this is, by the way, one of the best things about the internet. I think that nobody, everybody always talks about, oh, people is racist on the internet. True. But I think there's a lot of other people who are less racist because of the internet. Because they have their opinions, they have their prejudices, and then they end up in a fucking guild with a dude that's from Iraq, a dude that's from Qatar, a guy who is black. You know, some person from South America where all these illegals are coming from and they have a conversation and it turns out this person hates homework just as much as they do. This person likes titties just as much as they do. And you know what? They're not that fucking different. And that's what's so good about the Internet. It's actually like I, I think it's sad because I feel like we're going to see the death of global social media in the next 20 years. I think social media is becoming so powerful, it's going to get regulated, and it's going to get separated. And I'm, I'm so disappointed about that, because I think it's incredible that you can just talk to somebody. It's like, yeah, I'm from Africa. This is how it is. The, oh, okay, great. Fuck yeah. Like, I, I think it's just, it, it's so undervalued, the amount of, uh, like, uh, like, just unspoken multiculturalism. And so I'm very happy about that. I've always loved that about the internet. Like, how many of you guys, for example, talk to somebody on the internet from a place that, like, like, for example, I, I heard, uh, you know, like, Canada had free health care. And so I had a friend in my guild from Canada. And so I'm like, so, like, what is it really like over there? And he's like, he just tells me. It's not the media. And also, like, you can ask the questions that are, like, um, uh, like, for example, like you ask somebody like in, in South America, like, you know, do the, do the cartels really run everything? Like, wh what is it really like down there? Like you ask a question that's taboo. You ask a question that's not politically correct. And because you have this level of anonymity, you have this separation and both people have it. They can just have an honest conversation. I think that's so good. Nobody talks about that. It's one of the greatest things that online gaming does and just like being online in general. It's fucking incredible. People always talk about the negatives. Nobody says this. It seems the revolution will be TikToked. <laughs> I've been giving the impression throughout this video that it's all or most Americans who are terminally uneducated. But American ignorance isn't as evenly distributed as you'd think. Mm -hmm. That study I mentioned earlier when adjusting for English proficiency, income, and education levels, Americans are really no different from their European counterparts, and yeah. in some cases, marginally smarter. Mm -hmm. Knowledge about the wider world even correlates to political views, and yeah. not in the way that you'd think. A 2022 survey asked Americans 12 questions about the world, such as, who is the British Prime Minister? What does the Indian flag look like? And what this symbol represents? Oh, that's the fake money. I know that. The people the who fake answered communism money or socialism money. The most questions correctly were committed Democrats mm -hmm. and committed Republicans. Huh. Swing voters, those enlightened centrist chads, were the stupidest. Only 40% of moderate really? Republicans could name the US. Well, I, I guess that makes sense. You know, whatever you think about it, it does. Because they don't really get, they don't know enough about it to even have an opinion. Secretary of State, compared to 60% of convicted Republicans. I don't know who the fuck this guy is. Yeah, I'm part of the 40% here. Only half of moderate Democrats knew that the USMCA trade agreement replaced NAFTA. 
compared to 66% mm. of convicted Democrats. Uh-huh. Also, I just thought it was funny that the more Americans know about the European Union, the more favorable view they have of it. So are Americans ignorant? Many of them are. But it isn't their fault. It's a mix of geography, American imperialism, Cold War paranoia, moral puritanism, and economic factors that create a paradoxical nation that is both the most expansive- I I actually- I, I think that everything that he's bringing up in this video is very accurate. And I think that providing a historical context for it is true. But I actually think that the problem is like, isn't one of the big elements of like the George Orwell 1984, not the fact that there's misinformation necessarily, but that there's so much information out there that nobody knows what to actually believe. So people just ignore everything. Like that's my understanding of it. Yes, right. And I think that's where we're at is that there's so much information out there. Nobody knows what's real. Like, I was talking to somebody about this today. I was trying to figure out what the fuck is happening in Ukraine. It's hard to really know what's happening because every time that I read something, it's either that, like, it's a completely one-sided thing or Ukraine is full of Nazis. It's crazy. You get a hundred different answers. Yeah. And that's the problem, right? Is you have a hundred... You, you're, uh, you, you're just getting a hundred different answers with this stuff, and it's like, what the fuck is this? Ukraine is dominating, not losing any soldiers? Well, I'm not sure. It's probably both. Wait, is this confusing? What are the question marks for? Are we going to pretend like a lot of people aren't saying that Ukraine has Nazis in it? The Azov Battalion? I, he I hear about this all the time on Twitter. I'm not, I'm not agreeing with it. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying that people are saying it. And that's the whole point that I'm making. Is it like, how does, how does a... How does a person that doesn't have a large amount of time to devote to this, how can they intuitively know where to listen and what to listen to? I think it's a huge problem. And I think the issue really is the fact that there's, it's the corporatization of mass media. That's why I think people are stupid. Because people are stupid because media's job isn't to inform you, it's to make money. And because of that, you get to hear about shark attacks all the time. You get to hear about, um, you know, some crazy person who said something stupid, but you don't have to hear about what's happening in the government. You don't need to hear about that because it's boring. You get to hear about Florida, man, right? Something like that. And I think that's the issue. Yeah, is there, Azop, is there an Azov Battalion list or no? I don't, I, I don't know or care. Like you're, you're completely like, I don't, I don't you don't need to convince me if you if you're typing right now like your take on the Ukraine situation you're stupid like you're just a fucking idiot and we're not talking about that it was just simply an example stop being an NPC this dialogue option was not clicked stop it the point is that I'm making is that it's hard to know what's actually happening in a lot of these issues it's hard to understand and I think for an average person going into it without any frame of reference, it is incredibly hard to understand. And I think that's why we have so many problems. And also, I think that there is an element of, I don't know if this is a, an American thing because like I've grown up in America, I know American culture, but in American culture, at least a subset of American culture, there is a value in standing true to your ideals even whenever those ideals conflict with reality. And that's what happens, is that you see people that like, they're presented with evidence that clearly disproves their perspective, but they're not going to accept it. And then people view it as commendable that they stand their ground and they stand up for what they believe in. And it's scary. I'm sure this is a, this is a thing everywhere in the world, but in America, I know it certainly is. So I think the, it's it's that culture. Uh, it, it is probably like, um, you know, an American-centric education for fucking sure. But I think the biggest thing personally, what I think it is, is it's the, uh, the, the corporate media. And also keep in mind, whenever I say corporate media, I'm not talking about Fox and CNN and that's it. I don't think the Blaze or uh, the Young Turks or Infowars is any better. The only thing that these other smaller independent news companies do is that they just explain their bias so you can know to like they don't pretend to be objective, but none of them are objective and they're all spreading a fucking bias and they all have an angle and it's a problem. 
It is because nobody knows what to listen to. They stay in like their little echo chamber of listening to all of the people that they agree with. Because most people I think here, I don't know what it's like everywhere else. You know, going back to what I said about like standing true to what you believe in, people don't even want to hear the other side of things. They don't even want to have a conversation about it. They don't care about this. It doesn't matter to them. What matters to them is asserting what they think. And being, being told that that thing you think, yeah, it's true. You spend some time and figure it out. Well, people don't have 15 minutes. Like most people think about it, right? If you spend 15 minutes to figure out the bot, and, and by the way, it takes a lot longer than 15 minutes to figure out and figure out what reputable sources there are about like the Ukraine war. To inform yourself about the Ukraine war, it's gonna take more than 15 minutes. An average person doesn't have that time. And also I think that a lot of people in the US, like he's right about this too, they don't give a fuck. They don't know where Ukraine is. It's near Russia. Who the fuck cares? That's what a lot of people think for sure. And the people that don't are probably busy anyway. It's probably a vision of the world somewhat accurate or not in some immediate way. If you can be productive, some type of thing, you make a good enough living. Yeah, I think that's the way most people are. Yeah, they don't really give a shit one way or another. Empire, but also an informational prison of their own making. Oh, I think that's true too. Everybody, I, I don't think this is a unique thing to the US. I think that a lot of people, I think people naturally cultivate echo chambers. Why would you get around a bunch of people who you disagree with? Why would people want someone who disagrees with them around them all the time? It's not like you go to a church and there's like five people like, yeah, yeah, fake, fake. Yeah, where's the picture? Why, why didn't Jesus do any miracles now? Why'd miracles stop happening whenever they made cameras, huh? Yeah, we don't see the sun dancing around anymore. I wonder why that is, huh? Yeah, and they're sitting in the back talking shit to the pastor. It doesn't happen. And really, it's just common sense. Bless you, stupid bastards. You say internet lets people ask people from other countries other information, but they themselves are influenced by local media. Most people live between home and work and are equally uninformed. They are, and you're right about that. But if you're asking like in terms of lifestyle, and, and it's like, yeah, you're not gonna get a perfect idea of it, but I'm gonna be real. I would rather ask one real person than get my news from like some fucking uh, you, you know, massive megacorp that's just gonna maybe feed me bullshit. Like, I would probably just rather listen to one or two people and see what they say. Maybe this is a bad take. Maybe I'm not right about this, but that's at least like my viewpoint on it because I just assume all of these places are completely fucking uh, biased. I think this is a great video. I think it's also important to keep in mind, like one of the things that he brought up with this is that like a lot of people know there's so much disparity in America because you have some of the greatest universities in the world, and you also have some of the biggest fucking idiots, the fucking dumbasses that are saying the stupid shit, think aliens are real, like, oh my God, they're here. Like, and so there's just such a massive disparity in the US, and it's not like we don't, like, I mean, you can't look at only the really smart people or only the really dumb people and be like, oh, that's how it is. And that's freedom. It sure is. The freedom to be smart or freedom to be stupid. There's a difference between commentary shows and whenever they report what happened somewhere. No, there's not because the way you report it can change the way that it's perceived. I don't think that's true. My neighbor is a reptile. He's a Democrat. Yeah. Yep. I know. Stay woke, brother. You take what top 500 or 100 news sources say there are various political opinions, compile it into a book and have chat GPT summarize it. It's the least biased method. Yeah, but like people aren't gonna do that. Like, uh, like you really think somebody gives a fuck enough about to do that? And I'm just saying like, that's what the issue is. Is that like trying to get true, like just true unbiased coverage of something. You know what I think? I think it's just, it's not profitable. Because everybody says they want, un they want unbiased reporting, but I don't think that's true. I think people want unbiased reporting because they believe unbiased reporting will give them the information that they think is true. That's what I think. This is a, this is a good one. I, I, I like videos like this. These are really good. I'm gonna subscribe to this guy. I'll link the video again and uh, never trust streamers. No, never trust anybody.